Hello there. So in this video, we're going to be talking about ray tracing in mobile devices, specifically Android devices. I haven't experienced, um, I haven't had any experience at all with iOS devices recording this new technology. I mean, it's not new as iPhone is advertising it, but um, anyway, so let's, first of all, let's see um, what the fuss is about. So this is what we have right now. Um, so this is being played um, real time on my Galaxy S23 Ultra, all ray tracing, um, global illumination, ray tracing, um, reflections, ray tracing, shadows are enabled. And as you can see, the performance is not perfect. It's not great at all. It's unlike the most powerful um, cell phone on, on the planet. So, I mean, this is not something we can use um, daily on our games. But I'm going to be showing you some tricks here and there to make it useful on your games to the point that I have another phone. It's a pretty old phone. It's a Xiaomi Note 8 Pro, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's, it's a pretty old phone and I have been able to play my games with um, software lumen enabled on that one so it's it's a great thing to experience really so now that we're here let's get started first of all you need to do some things some other things to your project this is um basically on Unreal engine 5.3 we've had um it's called desktop renderer for mobile for a while now on Unreal Engine, even on Engine 4. So if you are using Unreal Engine 5.1, which is like the most stable version to my experience right now, you can go ahead and use the desktop renderer on that one. But if you are going to specifically be, exper uh, be experimenting with mobile ray tracing you need to download the newest version of Unreal Engine which is 5.3 so the next step would be go to your project settings support uh, target hardware it's not that important but I'm using mobile with maximum quality you can easily go ahead and use the desktop version it's not gonna uh, differ too much the next thing is that always make sure that you have um, accepted this SDK license here and you have so, um, pushed the button, I guess it's configure SDK or something. And um, you need to package the game data inside the APK. It's like the easiest way to install your game. Um, and if you are using a pretty new phone, which if you aren't, you can't actually experiment with this stuff. Make sure you have maximum supported aspect ratio to something more than 2.5 because the newer um, cell phones are wider and you need to change this number. Um, so we don't really need ES 3.2. This is only based on Vulkan, which most of the devices out there actually support it but if the um, the players are using a pretty old phone it's most likely that the phone uh, doesn't even support ES 3.2 so you can easily disable this one because we're not going to use it at all but I mean I didn't disable it but anyway we're specifically um, using Vulkan and Vulkan desktop so this these two must be enabled Vulkan and Vulkan desktop. Um, and that's pretty much it. The next next thing would be if you are going to be experimenting with ray tracing, then make sure that the uh, the hardware ray tracing is, is enabled. I'm using ray traced shadows as well. Without it, the shadows are not as great as desktop, but this is something I haven't tested, but if you put, uh, if you select the desktop version, maybe, maybe the shadows are different. 
I don't know, but that's something you need to go ahead and um, try for yourself. But if you select these two together, it's mo it most likely won't run, won't run on a lot of devices. So if you are actually wanting to target a lot of devices out there, these two should be disabled. This is just experimental stuff. And then uh, when everything's done, even if you are not selecting these two, you need to restart the editor for everything to take, take effect. The next thing that I was really stuck at is adding these to your base dev device profiles. So you can't do it inside Unreal. We have a tool for it, device profiles. You can't really do it here. You need to go ahead and do it in the config folder. So we have, uh, when you create your project, you usually won't have the default device profiles. If you don't have it, just go ahead and probably the default input, just copy it and paste it here. Uh, name it to default device profiles. I guess it's the name. Default device profiles, yes. Uh, and when you have it, just select uh, Control A, select all, delete, and come in here, select this, copy, and paste it here. And then you can just cut this one from here and paste it in your config folder. I already have it and I've added a lot of other stuff in it, so I, I'm not going to change it. Um, this is the most important part. Without it, it won't work. You have to specify that I'm going to use the Vulkan SM5. So, I mean, yeah, this is the most important part of it. And um, after this step, it should work just fine, but the performance is going to be terrible. <laughs> depending on the device you're using so oh by the way if you haven't you can just go ahead in the post process volume if you are using ray tracing then the standalone ray tracing is not going to be used it's it looks really bad honestly looks really really bad it's not something you'd want um lumen looks great if you're using brute force or final gather they're gonna be really really expensive so you can experiment this stuff you can try them all out but I'd say just disable them um, for reflections you can use lumen but at the end of the day if you want to target a wider audience you can't use lumen neither for reflections or for global illumination. That's the reality. Even if you are um, creating your game for PC, you can't really use Lumen at this moment. If you are, you're losing a variety, a, a, a really wide range of players out there who can't really play your game. So if you want to actually publish your game, is should be set to none and in project settings you can't use harder ray tracing and ray trace shadows that's just not possible um and you what you'll get though if you are using desktop render are a lot of different effects like actual ambient occlusion actual uh screen space uh global illumination like actual lens flares you'll get lens flares <laughs> in mobile games you'll get motion blur which is not possible in um, ES 3.1 and 2 I have another video to show you though um, this is another project I've been working on it's just a um, an ArcViz project. As you can see, we have ambient occlusion, we have 
motion blur everywhere I, I'll be working on the refractions as well refraction is something that you you won't have in ES 3.1 and 2 but you'll have you'll get um, you get them you get a pretty accurate refraction in desktop renderer uh, and of course screen space reflections which are pretty cool if you don't want to use planar reflections and you want everything to have reflective surfaces as you can see ambient inclusion looks really good and the shadows though are far far better in desktop render compared to ES 3.1 and 2 um, and I think I've explained everything um, this is actually a really really nice add-on to mobile development I would say that in a year from now no one <laughs> no one will ever use ES 3.1 and 2 again it's just a pain to use them um, and desktop render will just fix a lot of problems will solve a lot of decals problems a lot of uh, Z findings a lot of uh, G buffer problems it's just great for us to have a cons consistent system for both developing for PC and mobile at the same time, which is getting possible in these days. Um, so just go out there, experiment with a lot of new stuff that are coming. And if you have any comments, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to uh, answer them. And if I could, if I know how to solve them, solve them for you. Um, and if you did like this video please hit that like button and i wish you a great day